Hi, this is Rachel Wenty Cheney with a recorded version of the lightning round session that I presented at the Oregon Google Summit in October 2011. Trees and Branches, Logic Branching in Google Forms. Logic branching allows us to send users to different pages in a Google Form based on the answer they provide to a multiple choice question. Some classroom and school district examples are language translations. So if you have a form available in multiple languages, your first question can allow the user to self-select his or her language. Grade level assignments. Subject area teams or curriculum groups could create assignments or assessments for a set of grades, maybe 9th through 12th grade, and have the students self-select their grade as one of the first questions. Daily openers, which could be separated out by day or by subject area. And then event or class registration. The logic branching allows us to do some simple event management in Google Forms. There is an example available that illustrates the idea of this used for languages and multiple language versions of a form. So it's Everybody Loves a Day Off, and this was actually used in uh, the original Google announcement of logic branching. And you can see here that our first question is one that asks us our language. And if we choose English, we are taken to the English version of the next question, what is your favorite holiday? If I go back and select Spanish, I have the same question in Spanish, Japanese, and French. I know for most of us in schools that's a pretty powerful example right there of how we can really quickly uh, differentiate and provide specific information for specific populations. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk through just two more slides here talking about uh, some of the details and then we'll walk through building one of these forms with the branching in it. So the way we do it is first we create a new form we add page breaks because the multiple choice and the go to page based on answer function that gives us the branching requires multiple pages. Then we create our multiple choice question. We click the box that allows us to send the respondent to a page based on answer. And then we choose the related pages for those answers and for the next question sets. Some things to watch. Um, we, several of us have been doing quite a few of these um, branched forms. It's usually helpful in the branched forms to create a final page, and we'll see in action why we want to do that. But essentially, um, we don't want the person who chooses the first multiple choice option to then have to go through the others. So we want an exit page for them once they're finished. We want to edit our confirmation message when we use a final page to make sure that people still s click the submit button. And then remember that the duplicate button is your friend in forms. And be careful of using a lot of required questions, especially when you're doing branching, because if someone gets to an area, if you haven't given them an out by saying a none or a not applicable, they're really stuck. So required questions are great. Just make sure they're used appropriately. Okay, so we're heading into our walkthrough next. Okay, I'm now in my Google Apps environment, my Google Docs homepage. And the first thing I need to do for our branched form is actually start a form. So I'm going to click on the Create button and select Form. I'm going to say this is my elementary colors quiz. And I am not going to require users to be in our domain. So 
the first thing I want to do is add my page breaks because I know that I'm going to branch out my students on this quiz. So I'm going to add a page break for first grade and it will be primary colors. And then rather than going back up and adding item page break again, I am simply going to duplicate and say second grade secondary colors. Click my done button, duplicate again, and say third grade and tertiary colors. Okay, now you'll notice that after each of these pages, the default is continue to next page. Remember in the slides when I talked about we don't want the first grade once the first grade is finished answering its questions. Those students, we don't want them to go on to answer the second grade questions and the third grade questions. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate one last time and say quiz complete. And in my description, I'll say thanks for completing this quiz. Make sure you submit so it can be graded. So there's our beginning setup. Now, in my classroom, I'm going to go ahead and use this sample question one, edit it for first name. This can be a required question. We need our students' names on their quizzes. And last name. And of course, you could add whatever specific items you need as far as identifying your students. I'm going to go ahead and create another question I'm just going to duplicate it here and say, let's say I am in the I'm going to make this a multiple choice question and you'll see there's that little box that we can check that says go to page based on answer. So I'm going to go ahead and check that and give my students three options for identifying themselves. And you'll notice that next to the box, I can now send those students to the appropriate path. So for my first grade students, obviously I want them to go to the first grade page, second grade, and third grade. So now I'll click Done, and here's the beginning of my branched quiz. Okay, now that we have the beginning or the frame for our branched quiz set up, I'm going to go ahead and add my grade level specific questions. So I'm going to add a multiple choice question. That is, for my first grade students, I'm going to say, what are the primary colors? And on this one, we'll say red, green, blue, red, yellow, green, red, blue, yellow. And we'll just give them three options. This is a required question. And now that I've, I have the question in place, I can move it right up just by grabbing the little hatch. I can move it right up under first grade. And remember how I said we didn't want our first grade students to go on to the next page, which would be the second grade question. So I'm going to go ahead and say after they've answered, let's say quiz complete. 
for my remaining questions for second and third grade, I'm just going to duplicate. In this case, just like we did below, I'll change to secondary. And let's say green, yellow, blue. green, orange, purple, and we'll make this one have a purple also. Just like before, I can grab the little crosshatch, move it under my second grade, and remember I don't want my second graders to have to answer the third grade question, so I'll take them to quiz complete. And then I'll duplicate this for my tertiary colors. And on this one we have a lot of tertiary colors, so I'm only going to put three here in the interest of time. And then we'll pretend that this last one has the correct answer. Okay, now that I have that, just like before, I drag it under my page break for third grade. On this one, I could leave continue to next page because the next page is quiz complete, but I will go ahead and say quiz complete and that way if we make changes later on I don't accidentally send my students to a page that I don't need them to be on. So now you'll see that we start out with some identifying information based on the answer to this first question about what grade a student is in we take him or her to their related page. Okay, we have our pages built, our questions built, and our branching added in. So I am going to go ahead and click Save. Of course, I could change the options and edit the confirmation and things like that uh, for the purpose of this recorded version. I'm going to skip all of that, and we're going to go ahead and click on the link at the bottom of our editing window, which takes us to our live form. So you'll see here we are taken to a window with our quiz and we can insert our name and I'm going to say I'm in the first grade and you'll see we're brought to our first grade question. What are the primary colors? If I choose second grade, I'm taken to my second grade question, the secondary colors. And if I choose third grade, tertiary colors. And I'll go ahead on this example, click our bottom answer and continue. And you'll see there's that final page and this is why it's important to go ahead and highlight and call out that they still need to click the submit button. Now one last note. This is a very basic example of using the branching in forms to send your respondents to different sets of questions. I think where this gets really powerful in the classroom is imagining if I say again my name and that I am in the first grade. Right now we just have the student hopefully choose the correct answer and then he or she is taken to that final quiz page. What happens if, as a student, I choose red, green, blue, and as a teacher wanting to give immediate feedback, rather than taking that student to the quiz complete page, giving them a prompt and a second chance that if they choose red, green, blue, or red, yellow, green, there's a second chance at that question with maybe a little bit of review in that help text box when we're actually 
looking at the form editor. So if we edit this, we could provide, we could duplicate that question for our kind of second chance and then provide some help text to reteach at that moment when the student has answered incorrectly. And I think that actually um, is a pretty powerful application of this function in the classroom and one that we're starting to see used in many quizzes and in many common formative assessments in Oregon. I hope you enjoy making your forms and playing with the branching aspects available in Google Forms. Thanks for watching.